In this video, I'm going to show how to implement one smoke zone using the WSC 310S Compact Smoke Control Panel Standard Version. The products I will use are the Compact Smoke Standard Control Panel, two actuators representing two motor groups, the WLA331 rain sensor, the WSK501 brake glass unit, the WSK103 manual override switch, the WSA310 smoke detector, and the WSA306 end module for cable monitoring, which is used for connecting the panel to the fire alarm system of the building. For this installation, we're also using the WSA333 cable gland set. I open the box of the WSC310 control panel. Inside, I find the panel itself and the accumulators that are included. Let's now open the panel and see what's inside. First, we remove the key and use it to open the panel. Inside, we can find the installation manuals, cables for connecting the accumulators, the control panel labels in different languages, and a set of 10 kilo ohms resistors in case we need to use them during installation. Inside the panel, we can see the end modules for actuator cable surveillance that are mounted in the output for the actuators, motor line 1 and motor line 2. There is also a 10 kilo ohm resistor mounted in input X7, used for either smoke detectors or a signal from the fire alarm system. Another 10 kilo ohm resistor is mounted in input X10-5, used for the rain sensor. We're now ready to begin the installation of different peripherals. First, I'm going to connect the two actuators. In the output for motor line 1, I'll connect the actuator that I want to run in motor link mode. To do that, I need to remove the cable end module that's currently connected to the terminals and connect the actuator instead. Cable end modules are not required when running actuators in motor link mode. I insert the white cable core in terminal S1X1.1, the green cable core in terminal S1X1.2, and the brown cable in terminal S1X1.3. I'll connect the second actuator that I want to run in standard plus minus 24 volt mode. On motor line two, terminal S1X2, in order to do that, I remove the cable end module and connect it back at the end of the actuator cable as close as possible to the actuator. I'm using a junction box. On this side of the junction box, I've connected the cable from the control panel. All three cable cores need to be connected to the junction box. On the other side, I've connected the cable from the actuator. Only the plus and minus cable cores need to be connected to the junction box. In our case, brown and white. The third cable core is not connected. Now I'll connect it to the panel in the same order as the other actuator. White into terminal 1, green into terminal 2, and brown in terminal 3 the WSK103 manual override switch. Inside, we find the installation manual, the cable, and the switch itself. I'll now connect the switch to run motor line 1. I connect the brown cable core into S1X3.1, the white into X1X3.2, and the green into S1X3.3. 
the WSK501 brake glass unit. I take the brake glass unit out of the box. There's also an installation manual and the brake glass unit labels in different languages. I remove the key from the back and use it to open the brake glass unit. Inside, we see a label with the serial ID of the product that can be used later to identify this unit. I have already prepared the following connections on the brake glass unit terminals. The WSK link cable is connected on terminals 1, 2 and 3. A 10 kilo ohms resistor is connected on terminals 7 and 8 because I'm not going to connect any smoke detector to the brake glass unit in this example. And the manual override switch on terminals 9, 10 and 11. In order to connect the brake glass unit to the panel, I have added a plug on the cable. I'm removing the existing plug in the panel and connecting the brake glass unit on terminal S1X5. Now I'm going to connect the cable for the alarm signal from the fire alarm system. In the end of the cable connected to the fire alarm system, I've connected the end module for cable surveillance that you can see here. I'll remove the resistor on terminal S1X7 and connect the cable with the signal from the fire alarm system. The WLA331 rain sensor. We open the box and inside we find the installation manual, the fixture for fixing the rain sensor on the roof, and the sensor itself. I open the sensor. And inside, we find the screws to close it, the terminals to connect it, and the dip switches to configure it. Next, I want to connect the rain sensor to the control panel. In order to do that, I must remove the resistor from the terminal S1X10 and connect it again to the sensor itself. As you can see here, I've connected the resistor on terminals 3 and 4 and the cable leading to the panel on terminals 1, 2 and 3. Now I connect the rain sensor to the panel. The brown core, which is the plus 24 volts on terminal X10.4. The signal for the rain sensor, the blue core, on terminal X10.5 and the black core, the common, on terminal X10.6. Next, I'm going to connect the power supply. First, I remove the plastic housing, and afterwards I connect the cables. I have connected the blue and brown cable cores on the green terminals, and the earth core on the screw. Now I'm going to connect the accumulators. I use the short black cable to connect the two accumulators to each other. I connect one end to the black on one accumulator and the other to the red on the other accumulator. We have two remaining cables. I connect the black cable to the black terminal on the battery I wait with connecting the red cable to the red terminal on the battery until I power the control panel. I put back the plastic cover for the main power input. We're now going to power the panel. First the 230 volt, then we're connecting the battery. Now that we've powered the panel, we can initiate the panel's auto configuration process. We do this by pressing the up and down buttons at the same time 
and keep pressing until the red LED is switched on. The panel will find all the hardware and configure itself accordingly. The process can take up to two minutes. The panel is ready when only the green LED is switched on. The panel is now ready. Let's test it to see if it works. We can start by testing the brake glass unit. If I press the alarm button, we see that the red LED on the brake glass unit and the red LED on the panel are switched on and the two actuators are opening. We reset and see that the red LEDs are switched off and that the two actuators are closing. Now I will simulate the activation of the alarm from the fire alarm system. I'll do it by closing this contact. Again, the two red LEDs on the brake glass unit and the control panel are on and the actuators are opening. When I open the contact, the red LEDs turn off and the actuators are closing. For the comfort ventilation, we have the manual override switch that is configured to operate motor line 1. I press the open button and only the actuator in motor line 1 is opening. Stop. Close. The manual override switch connected to the brake glass unit should activate all the actuators that are associated with this smoke zone. I press the open button and both actuators start opening as expected. Now I close. You can also test the installation from the panel. To do that, you can use the up and down buttons from the panel. I press the up button and both actuators will open. Short press to stop and the down button for closing the actuators. Everything is working as expected, the control panel is ready for use.